If you live in Vancouver, you know how expensive real estate is here. Literal garbage heaps go for millions of dollars. So the thought on every young person's mind growing up here is, how do I even get enough to afford a down payment on a place in Vancouver? The average home in Vancouver sells for about $1.3 million, which means you need to raise about $260,000 just to put down a 20% down payment on a place. And then when you're looking at a mortgage, even with historically low interest rates, you're looking at about $6,000 per month after your mortgage, property tax, and all the little things you need to upkeep a place. But you're probably thinking, well, there's suburbs, right? Richmond, Burnaby, Surrey, except the cost of houses in those places over the last seven years have doubled. So good luck there as well. Year after year, Vancouver housing prices go up hotter and faster than this guy trying to eat a watermelon. So you saw the video headline. I got three city blocks worth of land only 30 minutes away from Vancouver for only $179,000. What's the catch? Fresh off the coast of West Vancouver is an almost entirely off-grid island called Gambier Island. It's got about 200 full-time residents with a lot more people coming in the summer to enjoy cabins on one of its many beautiful shores. Here's a little bit of what it looks like. There's no central road network on Gambier Island and no town of any sort. Each community sort of exists on different pockets of the island distinct and separate from one another. The busiest side of the island is the side closest to the Sunshine Coast, but where I got my property was actually closer to Horseshoe Bay and Vancouver on the east side. It's so close in fact that you could actually get there by speedboat in less than 35 minutes on a clear day. So again, what's the catch? Well, everything that you come to know and enjoy about living in the city or living in Vancouver is non-existent out there. No cheap sushi, no sky train, no nightlife, no dispensary every second block. And if we're gonna go down that road, actually there's no mainline hydro, there's no hospitals, no restaurants, no police, no industry of any sort. It's basically just a beautiful paradise with a couple cabins every now and then. Which means if you want to live there, you're gonna have to learn how to be 100% self-sustainable. All right, so let's dive into the story of this three city block sized piece of land on Gambier Island. How I managed to afford it as basically a freshly graduated film student, what I do for a living now and my finances, and what I plan on doing with the piece of property in the future. So before I, I jump into doing the video, I just kindly ask if you haven't already, just subscribe to Kinetic Finance channel down below. We put out a whole bunch of things, not only videos about you know living on an island, but things about personal finance, things about cryptocurrency, anything and everything that I'm interested in, things that you're gonna find out later about in this video that you'll probably find pretty interesting as well. So I love making movies, pretty much of my whole life. I used to make little claymations on a YouTube channel when I was like 12 years old. I did short films and, and little bigger films in high school. I went to university, the University of British Columbia to do a film production degree, and I graduated in 2016. And if you know anything about Vancouver, if you're a freshly graduated film student, you kind of have like one of two paths. You can either go down the Hollywood route and work in the industry, you know, learn about all the Netflix productions going on, Amazon productions, uh, it used to be big networks, but now it's like all these streaming services making stuff here, and work your way up as like a production agent, and then, you know, going to cinematography, going to editing, going to directing, kind of pick your flavor, but at the end of the day, you're kind of working your way up, hoping that you eventually get into a union of some sort so that you can get a stable gig, uh, you know, going from one show to another. And then the other route of doing film production in Vancouver is sort of freelancing. So doing things like commercials, corporate, you'll work for like a small production company um, or a big production company, but you'll kind of be like a jack of all trades, learning everything from the cinematography to the editing or just making your own films, uh, wedding videos, good example as well. And I took that second route. I worked at a production company for about two years as an editor full time. But before that, just rewinding it a little bit, when I graduated UBC and I went on like full student loans for the whole thing um, because I didn't really have any money growing up, I got a couple scholarships but not like a ton for more than like one year worth of you know education. I went full on student loans for the whole thing and at the end of it I somehow was left with like $3,000 when I graduated. 
And if you know anything about me, you know anything about this channel, um, I am really into cryptocurrency and I put that $3,000 into a cryptocurrency called Ethereum. I actually did a video with the largest personal finance YouTuber on YouTube, Graham Stephan, where I went into kind of my whole journey. But to just recap it really quickly, I got into Ethereum basically summer, spring of like 2016. It didn't do anything for about a year. It actually lost like 50% of its value. I said, screw it, you know, it's only 3,000 bucks. I'll make that back anyways. And you know, the rest is history. Ethereum went from like 13 bucks to $1,200. So like, you know, 10,000 times return almost if you got in at a certain time, kind of like Bitcoin basically. Um, and so that helped me obviously a lot, but while that was doing its thing, I ended up working for another production company as an editor for two years, doing everything from commercials, um, you know, corporate videos and learning everything in between about the editing process, so much more than I had ever learned in school. So from there, basically, I think fast forward to about 2018, I felt that I had learned enough and I had a little bit of capital from the whole cryptocurrency thing to start my own video production business and I did that. And so like I was saying, there are a ton of video production agencies in Vancouver. So one of the hardest things to do is figure out, well, how do you, how do you separate yourself from everyone else? How do you get clients? Why would someone come to you and pick you over like every other guy? So you always have to compete on things like price, quality, and it can sometimes be like a big race to the bottom because again, the more people you have, the lower the cost for services. There's all this competition. Every person looking for videos got like a billion options. I ended up reaching out to a bunch of companies in the cryptocurrency space, and that's kind of how I got my first clients. It was a space I was really into, and I felt that when I made videos for them, I could really have an edge compared to other production companies because I felt like I understood, you know, what they were looking for and the problems that they were trying to solve. And so basically, my whole business was founded on this idea of learning about, you know, different areas, whether it be cryptocurrency, cannabis, or technology you know, learning about these industries, getting really interested in them, doing my research and then approaching them saying, I understand your industry and I can make you something that's better than the, all the other hundred video production companies out there because I feel like I'm more connected to what you're actually doing. So that worked obviously to some degree. Um, I have a production company now that's doing about $250,000 a year in revenue. I have about two part-time employees. I'm always in it full-time. I started that agency kind of early 2018. The cryptocurrency thing was kind of like peaking at early 2018. And I cashed out a amount out of my original investment using some of that profit, using some of the stuff from the business I had started. And I bought the piece of land on Gambier Island, five acres, sun drenched, 10 minutes from the waterfront for only $179,000. When I got the property on Gambier Island, it was pretty much completely empty. I think the only thing there was really a drilled well about 150 feet deep, but you know, no mechanism or anything like that. So there's no septic, there's no electricity. Um, really 100% basically off the grid. But the big appealing factor to me was it was really close to Vancouver. And, you know, it wasn't connected by land to Vancouver, but with a boat, it was really quick to get there. And I thought, well, I didn't have enough to get a condo or anything like that, maybe a down payment for one, but I didn't want to be beholden to a bank. And also, you know, knowing me, I don't think I would have been able to get a mortgage. I wasn't able to get a mortgage on this piece of land. So I had to buy the whole thing outright. I wouldn't have been able to do much with, you know, $179,000 in Vancouver. So I got this piece of land instead. And that was kind of my way of securing a piece of real estate in Vancouver. Uh, really early on because obviously as time goes on the things just get more expensive and like the statistics in the beginning of the video You have to make an absurd amount of money to live here. So what is my property actually like? Well, it's a 10 minute walk from a east side of Gambier Island called Furcom Plateau There's a little campground uh, kind of as you get off the dock from Horseshoe Bay to see it And then about a 10 minute walk slightly up a hill you'll be able to get to my property and when I got it, of course, there was nothing on it except basically that drilled well. Now I have a really small little work in progress temporary cabin, and I'm looking to do things like solar, put a little bathroom in there, get some fresh water coming up from that well, just little things like that. But, you know, of course, the thing that a lot of people ask is, well, okay, so you have this big, you know, this piece of property. What does it cost to maintain something like that? Because, you know, when you buy a place, it's never you paid for it and then you're done. Now, the great thing about this piece of property is you have about $700 of property tax. You have about $500 for the road and maintenance in the local kind of like community organization. And then about $500 of insurance, just in case someone trips and hurts themselves on your property, you don't wanna get sued. So all in all, that's about $1,700 worth per year that I have to pay to maintain that place, which is basically just like a 
venti mocha frappuccino from Starbucks like every weekday. So like five bucks times, you know, 300 or whatever um, to maintain a, a whole five acre property per year. And from there, I'm able to kind of work at my own pace to build it and grow it and develop it. You know, when I get a little bit of money from the business or from trading or whatever I do, I put a little bit into getting something new out there. You know, I just did the floors a little bit there. I just got a solar generator. That was kind of a big thing. I got a little mini fireplace out there, which is kind of cute. And all these things, you just kind of chip away at them when you're developing something like this. It's not like when you get a whole house and you have this steady stream of things you have to maintain. You just kind of put little things out there one at a time. And that's kind of how I built up the whole thing. So the two things that actually made that property in particular really attractive versus some other ones that I saw on Gambier Island were a couple of things. Number one is that it actually gets full cell phone signal from Bowen Island, which is kind of the neighboring island across from Gambier, and I believe Vancouver and maybe the Sunshine Coast as well. So you're not really entirely off the grid. You can you know run internet and things there feasibly. You can tether your phone if you needed to. The second big thing was that it was really close to the water, um, so I never have to worry about you know being being stuck there. I could always just get a boat and rip into Vancouver, no problem whatsoever. The other big thing too was that the property that I have is it's kind of on a hill, so it's entirely sun drenched, south facing all day long. So Gambier Island is wedged in the Howe Sound, and basically you have these giant mountains. I believe it's like Cypress Mountain. Uh, to the right side depending on where you are and then the Sunshine Coast and then the rest of Gambier Island on the other side And so as soon as the Sun rises above those mountains You're just hit with Sun all day long on that property So it's a perfect place for solar energy, which is kind of the project that I'm working on right now out there And so being off-grid you have a couple options you have propane gas solar I don't think thermoelectric's a big thing out there, but you know the big one is solar and basically having access to that sunshine all day despite it raining in Vancouver and Gambier lots of the year is really important because even on a cloudy day as long as you're facing the right direction you can still generate a decent amount of solar power to live there essentially off grid where i am there are water taxis they're a little bit limited they run every kind of morning and night on friday saturday sunday all year round and then in the summer there's pretty much like everyday service because a lot of people go out there in the summer so that was kind of convenient that was another reason that i got the place but obviously the the trickiest thing about gambier is because there's no town and there's no way to buy things you know like supplies and things that you need you, you get very close with your neighbors you know in terms of getting labor out there to help you construct in terms of getting materials excavation and things like that otherwise you need to get a barge out there and you have to strategically load that barge up with what you need whether it's like a house or a toilet because that costs like $500 an hour to move all that stuff. And that's not including, you know, the trucks and stuff you have to rent to get stuff up physically to your property. So by no stretch of the imagination is this whole journey to Gambier an easy one. It's not like buying a condo or buying a house in Vancouver and it's like ready to go and you're ready to flip it next year for like 30% more than you paid for it. But I think for the cost, if you have that sense of adventure, and I think specifically if you're younger, and you, you want to learn about self-sustainability and living off the grid like so many people are doing nowadays, it's the perfect place to go. It's completely affordable. And there are lots of properties still available on Gambier Island that you can you know get a boat and easily go to Vancouver from. I wanted to make this video because I don't think a lot of people know about that. I think I'm probably going to get some scorn from my neighbors there for maybe like revealing the secret, although I don't have like a massive following. So hopefully we don't get like a thousand people out on Gambier after this video, but maybe... I don't know, who knows. But anyways, as I was saying in the beginning of the video, the cost to feasibly own something in Vancouver is, you know, next to impossible unless you have a really high paying job. I mean, you basically have to be an entrepreneur with multiple sources of income to afford something in Vancouver or you have to have, you know, a trust fund daddy to, to help you purchase a property of any sort kind of in the city center. And then even extending out to the suburbs, now Chilliwack, which is like 100 kilometers away from Vancouver, is even getting ridiculously expensive. So... Yeah, I think it's it's something that was, uh, you know, a big thing for me personally to try and get something close to Vancouver has always been a goal and being able to kind of like knock it out early and then being able to work at my own pace to afford the things I needed to live comfortably out there and to still live comfortably out there is kind of its own rewarding process. And I don't want to be a downer, but I think everyone assumes that with COVID that, you know, housing prices are just going to collapse. There's going to be this big demand of you know, no one's going to want to live in cities and stuff after because it's so unaffordable. And I just don't think historically, if you look at those statistics, that's really the truth. You know, we might have a correction if there's a recession and things like that. But I think the city of Vancouver is not going to die out anytime soon in terms of having million dollar houses, um, you know, flush on the market and condos that are just being built, you know, one block after another going for ridiculous prices. 
So I think it's really upon our generation to figure out new ways of housing, and they might not be so pretty, but it's, it's actually really nice to see a lot of people from our generation kind of getting back down to earth. There's a whole bunch of tiny home channels on YouTube which show people in Australia, North America, and Europe converting old trailers into these beautiful little tiny homes. Maybe they're only like 8 feet by 10 feet, but they feel like expansive apartments basically. And people building things that are entirely off the grid, people building like full house-sized tree houses and stuff. Really cool things, and I think Gambier Island is one of those opportunities for people in Vancouver who have that creative urge, who really want to secure something nearby, um, to, to do something like that, to, to be self-sustainable, to build something off-grid, to have that opportunity to be next to Vancouver, but live somewhere completely affordable and you know more creatively if you have the willpower to do it. So if you like content like this, please feel free to subscribe down below. I had a blast making this video. I will definitely be sharing more content about the island coming soon. I have a whole bunch of little products I've had to buy to like build a house out there. And they're completely unrelated to personal finance, but I'll probably do some reviews on those, like the Titan solar generator that I use to have electricity out there. So again, yeah, if you like this video, please like, subscribe down below. And thanks for watching. I hope you guys gained something out of this. I hope it was enjoyable to learn about Gambier Island. And yeah, can't wait to talk more about it soon. Cheers.